This teaching is brought to you by Christian Family Church, Emilach Lenny. My message today is about the joy of the journey. If some of you have, uh, have children, you had children maybe, you have grandchildren now, you know when you go somewhere, if you have ever been with them on a trip, they will constantly ask, are we there yet? Are we there yet? And many times ourselves, I remember when I was a child, I, I used to say it to my dad when we went somewhere, our kids will say, are we there yet? When are we getting there? You know, we just want to be there. We want to arrive there. So uh, we are constantly looking forward. So as adults, we get frustrated with a long trip because most of the time we, there's something nice going to happen at the end of the trip. We want to get there so that we can start enjoying it. We're going to have fun. Maybe we're going on holiday. We can't wait to get there. You know, you'd start planning months in advance and you can't wait to count the days off to get there. And some of us, it's even like that just for the week, you know. Monday, I'm starting counting the days, how many times until it's Friday again. I can't wait for Friday to arrive. We are into that most of the time. We're expecting something better to, to be there any day. In the parable in, uh, of the talents in Matthew 25, um, the master gave uh, some of his servants, he called three of them, one he gave five talents, one he gave two talents, and one he gave one talent. And then when he came back, uh, there was two of the servants that multiplied their talents. And the master said to them, well done, good and faithful servant. This phrase here tells us that finishing isn't the only goal. Getting there is not the only goal. It is how we finish. Are we called, will we be called good? Who have we become in this, on the way? That is important. Will we be called faithful? Will our master, will God says, well done, good and faithful servant. The time we spend here on earth is called a lifetime. And that's for a very good reason. It takes time for us to live our life. It takes time. It takes a lifetime to become like Christ. And that is what it is about, family. We can, for us, many times it's about many other things. But this life here is for us to become like Christ. If our only focus is getting to the end of a circumstance or a season of our lives, for example, you know what we do when a baby is born. I know now with my grandchildren, if only she can... Um, the first three months can be over, you know, then there will not be winds anymore and cramps anymore. Then if only the, she can sit up straight, you know, if only she can start crawling, if only she can walk, if only she can be off the nappies, if only she can start going to stu school, be out of school, get married. <laughs> what do we do with ourselves? You know, when we in, in school, we, want, we always say, wanted to say as children, I remember, I want to tell somebody I'm actually a bit older than I am. So if I was supposed, if I, if I turn 12 this year and I'm still 11, I will actually tell others that I am 12. <laughs> you know? Because we think that's better. There's something better. So we always also thought like that. If I can just finish school, if I can just get married, if I can just have children, if I can just have a car or a house or a better job, have a better husband... I can just get out of this mess. <laughs> if only, if only, if only I can get there. If that is our attitude, family, we can so easily miss the treasures that God has placed for us along the way to discover. Treasures that, will, that we will need in order to thrive and finish well, to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. God in his wisdom gave us a lifetime to live here on earth. We need to enjoy the journey of our lifetime. Not just live for the highlights or to arrive at our destination. If we are really honest with ourselves, we are for the biggest part of our life on a journey and not at the destination. So if we only live for those highlights or getting there, we're missing the biggest part of our life. 
We need to embrace the journey and allow the joy of the journey to continually transform us into how to think about life, about God, and maybe most importantly, about the circumstances that we encounter on the way. Often the very elements that can accelerate our journey are the most, the ones that we, uh, in every situation, we try the hardest to avoid. We want to run away from them. When obstacles appear on, on the horizon, we're prone to view them as negatives. We think, oh no, trouble, trouble. Never forget that if you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you are in his kingdom now. And we cannot do as the world does when it comes to negatives and problems. We cannot behave in the same way, family. We need to decide. There's the kingdom of God, and then there's the kingdom of the world. We cannot stand in both. We need to decide where are we. And we need to be different than the world if we are in the kingdom of God. Then we need to see, uh, um, look at, at the challenges and, and problems differently. Never, uh, you cannot do as the world does. The kingdom of God does not operate according to the world. We play different rules. It's different games. It's like soccer and rugby. If you play rugby with soccer rules, it will be a mess. Somebody's going to get hurt. We can't play kingdom of God and kingdom of the world with the same rules. We have to renew our minds, change our thinking to kingdom thinking. Romans 12 verse 2 says, Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. Do you hear that, family? There's a culture around us. We grew up in cultures. Stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you, but be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in His eyes. And that is our end goal. In the kingdom of God, every promise comes with provision attached to it. Challenges does not come alone. There is no problem in your life that does not have a promise or provision in the same space with it. There's four Ps. Problem, promise, possibility, provision. There are four Ps in a pot together. <laughs> Problems, a, a promise, possibility, provision. That is the kingdom of God. You need to stop engaging with the problem. We need to change our thinking to look like this. Problem? Amazing! Brilliant! Yes! Bring it on! Awesome! Amen? <laughs> You're very quiet. I'm so sorry for you if you don't have a problem. Don't worry. Just wait for it. You're going to get one soon. I'm super excited and blessed to have one. <laughs> you know, I had a wonderful testimony yesterday, and I'm so blessed by it because I knew that I was going to speak about it today from one of our ushers, Sanele Siwe. She's on the way to uh, our outreach. She shared with me what God has done in her life. It, her life was in a mess. And so she had so many challenges and, prom and problems. And uh, she was here. She was in a small group. She was attached to other people that encouraged her, helped her to focus on the Word of God uh, and, uh, and to not look only at her circumstances. And today she... She testifies the goodness of God, how God, and you know what she said, family. Now I look at problems differently. I'm excited when a problem comes because I know God is going to be there in the fire next to me when I'm in that problem and in that difficulty. So that, I, I thank God that lives are changing, and we see that. Uh, um, you know, this is what Pastor Julius on Monday, when he informed us of what happened, he said, tell the family not to worry. Whatever I need to go with, through, I know God will be there in the fire next to me. And God was there, and he is still there. So we thank God. If the problem looked as big as that, 
as big as that, how much bigger is going to be the provision and the promise? We need to get excited about a problem. What did we sing just now? Count the joy come every battle, because I know that's where you'll be. So we're going to look actually for the problems, because I want to be where Jesus is. <laughs> okay. We must ask the Lord what the promise is. We find the promise in the Word of God. So pray, ask God, what is His promise about your situation? And then you confess what God says about your circumstance. You confess, first of all. Then you declare to the enemy who you are in Christ. And then you proclaim to the Lord in thanksgiving who He is for you in that situation. And the problem gets in between you the promise, sorry, gets in between you and the problem and destroys your problem. As you focus on the promise, the provision will start to take shape in your heart. In the kingdom, no negative can be present without its positive also being present. Many times, family, we focus on the problem and we make it bigger than God. We talk to people, and even worse, we talk to God about the problem. God doesn't want us to talk to Him about the problem. He's the God of possibilities. Nothing is impossible for Him. Jesus is our example. He gave us many examples like that. He never spoke about impossibility. We just heard the, the, the word that Nadine shared. When there was a problem of uh, 5,000 and more people, and there was only five breads, loaves of bread and two fishes, what did Jesus say? He didn't say, no, let's just send them away, or shame, they, they must, you know, just handle it. No. He said, there's a possibility. Let's look at the possibility. And that is who our God is, and we also now have those possibilities because we are children of God. We must say, Father, this has happened. This is my situation. How do you see it? What is the possibility here? I thank you for this problem, but I know the possibility is bigger. Show me the possibility. And that is what we pray for. We thank God for this huge possibility. And we say, I'm so excited about it. I can't stand myself. Because I'm going to see Jesus manifesting himself more than I ever could see him before in any other situation. Genesis 18.14 says, Is anything too hard for the Lord? Anything? Is there any situation where God cannot be magnificent? Where he's not in charge? No. God is bigger than any problem. Can we say that together, family? One, two, three. God is bigger than any problem. Ephesians 1 verse 21 and 22 says, And now he is exalted as first above every ruler, authority, government, and realm of power in existence. Can you see? That is our God. There's nothing bigger than our God. Sons and daughters in chair one understand that all problems are part of the journey that God has set in motion. We are not overwhelmed by the negative because we are aware of the journey that God has put us on to train us, to equip us, to empower us in His name. The journey is the process that we need to become like Christ. We grow up in all things in Christ when we commit ourselves to the journey of God and all its ups and downs. When we are immature Christians in chair two, we only focus on the crisis and the problem itself and not the bigger picture of our own spiritual development that is going to take place because of this. This is another thing that Sonnelli Siwe said that I remember now. She said, I see how I grow spiritually, and I th thank God for that. The journey is where we discover 
God at work in our lives. It is where we submit to the work of His hands. Life is all about the journey. There's no growth, no maturity without that. We learn in the journey that the purpose of problems is for us to grow and become Christ-like, to know God, to get to know God, who He is for us, and to develop our trust in God. Trust means in our emotions. We, go, we do not get in our emotions even upset because we trust our God. If we never had any problems, how will we get to know Holy Spirit as our comforter? The Father as being faithful and Jesus as our friend who is holding out his hand to us in an invitation to get to know a new aspect of his nature that we've never seen before. God wants us to, to know him intimately. And therefore, it's part of life's journeys to have problems and challenges so that we can get to know him. Adversity, when there's difficulties and unpleasant situations and ac acceleration, growing, are partners in this journey. They work as a team. Adversity and acceleration works together as a team. In the Bible, we get many examples like this. Joshua's leadership was established in Israel with what seemed to be an insane battle plan to take a massive fortified city by silently marching around the walls until it was time to shout. David accelerated from being a shepherd boy to a national hero after defeating a very large giant who had paralyzed the whole army of Israel. An outbreak of persecution forced the early church out of the comfort zone of Jerusalem, allowing them new opportunities to, to, opportunities to share the gospel throughout a much greater territory. And Daniel gained, gained favor and influence with kings while he was in the lion's den. We have all the examples in the Bible. Tough times, challenges, and obstacles that the enemy has designed to take us out of the race can be the very occasion that God smiles at and is waiting for us to see, will you see this, my child? Are you going to see who I am for you right there in this situation? Or are you going to miss it? Are you going to just focus on the problem? Or do, are you going to choose to look at me and know that I am your God? I'm faithful. I'm always there for you. I'm bigger than anything. We know that he plans to be for us as we encounter him in a new way. Family, this virus worldwide, I believe that God wants to pour out revival over the whole earth. The enemy wants to counteract that with his plans, but we know he will not be successful there's no way he will be successful. We will look at this as in the joy of the journey. We will see what God says, what he wants to do. And we as a family, we speak what God says he wants to do. We do not speak about the problem and talk about the problem. We talk about the provision and the promise. Nothing upsets our adversary more than having the very thing that was meant to discourage us become an opportunity for acceleration advancement and upgrade in the spirit. He continually seems to forget that we don't need to know God as the faithful one when we are surrounded by loyal friends. Encountering the Holy Spirit as teacher isn't so necessary when we've got life all figured out. A happy heart does not need a comforter, a broken one does. When we can learn to replace the question, why do these things always happen to me? And choose instead to focus on, God, who do you want to be for me now in this situation? We deal the devil a staggering blow. We turn the obstacle meant to destroy us into an opportunity to become stronger in Christ. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that all things, all things work together for good 
to those who love God. All things, family. Can you say all things? You know, me and Pastor Warren used to cycle a few years ago. And um, then I would get upset with him because when we go uphill, I would like to drink water, eat something, you know, because I can't go so fast. He wants us to, he says, no, we can do that when we go downhill. We don't do that when we go uphill. <laughs> I, and actually, uh, you know, I thought, really? What is this about? So when we go uphill, he's stronger than me. He can go faster than me. I get upset with him because I'm the one struggling here. <laughs> but it, when we train uh, for a race, he will keep on saying, no, we don't eat, we don't drink uphill, let's, let's exercise. We have to get at the top. When we go downhill, then we can drink and have water. Until we get to the race day. And then when we go uphill, I realize, oh, okay, he was just preparing me for the uphill to get ready so that I'm not so tired and I can actually do this race and get, the, get it done in good time. He was preparing me. So he was actually for me. He was not against me. <laughs> Although he didn't feel like that when we were exercising and training for the race. God is for us, family. Every situation is for us. Our light affliction is but for a moment, and it works for us, not against us. It doesn't feel like that always, but we believe what the Word of God says. It works for us, not against us. So when it comes to, to the time of the race, I will thank Him afterwards, <laughs> because I, I didn't struggle as much uphill. I actually could enjoy the journey. I was prepared for it. So he used the obstacles for today to fuel the opportunities of tomorrow. When we embrace the joy of the journey, we will know that adversary adds value to the journey. And we will use it as training. Because next time, when the enemy comes against you again, you will, know, you, will, you will say, no, I know my God. I know what he's done for me yesterday. And I know he's going to do for it, it for me again, and even more. Amen. One of the promises in the Bible that we never see on a pretty refrigerator magnet is John 16, 33. In this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And Christ is in us, family. How can we not be overcomers if Christ is in us? It doesn't say maybe or you might encounter some tribulation. No, it says it is going to be there. So prepare yourself. Get ready. Jesus told his disciples how to prepare. And it wasn't with cynicism that expects the worst. He didn't say, oh no, this is so bad. What is going to become of you? I'm not sure if you'll make it. Poor you. Run away. Just get out of it. Quickly. Listen to what he said. Cheer up. <laughs> I have overcome the world. Can you say cheer up? Yeah. Let's also say, I have overcome the world. <laughs> yes. To finish our race well with joy, we need to embrace our challenges as opportunities that will strengthen us to make it to the end so that we will hear, well done, good and faithful servant, no matter how many appeals we encountered on the way. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 16 and 17 says, rejoice always, always, not just when it's good or bad. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. Not only when things are well. In everything. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. We purposely practice to always rejoice. We choose this family. We are in the kingdom of God. So we choose to rejoice. We practice it. We apply it into our, on, in our lives. We pray without ceasing, and we give thanks in everything, knowing that the obstacles of today 
are practice ground for finishing well tomorrow. The joy in our journey as sons and daughters of God is to know that our relationship with God is the journey. And getting to know Him in it is the greatest joy of all. Philippians 3.10, Paul says, For my determined purpose is that I may know Him, that I may become more progressively and deeply acquainted, acquainted with Him, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of His person. I want you to go and read this at home. Highlight it in your Bible. Go and read it over and over and over again. Because this is our um, end goal. And every day, we take small steps to reach our end goal. We do not just get there all of a sudden. If we do not step every day, we're not going to get there. So let us every day take the small steps to also have the determined purpose to become more progressively and deeply acquainted with God, perceiving and recognizing and understanding the wonders of His person. The joy of the journey is knowing Him as our Father and everything that comes with His fatherhood. It is knowing Jesus as our Lord and Savior, as the friend who sticks closer than a brother, as wonderful counselor, as prince of peace, as king of kings. It is our intimate friendship with the Holy Spirit as comforter, as genius teacher, and steadfast helper. God is so amazing. He gave us Holy Spirit that are always with us 24-7. Isn't that awesome, family? We need to find the simplicity and the joy in traveling with the Holy Spirit as our best friend. People will um, drop us. People cannot be always there for us. We all have faults. We all make mistakes. But Holy Spirit is always there for us. And He's the best helper, the best counselor, the best teacher, everything that we need. It is perceiving who He wants to be for us in any circumstance, recognizing Him and knowing how He thinks and loves. It is living in the understanding and wisdom of His grace, His mercy, His love, His kindness, His peace, His patience, His faithfulness, and so much more. We will keep on learning who He is into eternity. Let's rejoice, family, over opportunities to get to know Him. Let us enjoy the journey and not miss what He has for us. Amen.